Moving on to item number 41. What is the value of i raised to 29? Knowing that your i is your square root of negative 1 earlier, is it i, negative i, i 1, or negative 1? So to do this, it's important to know that there is a periodicity in terms of the value of i. If you have i raised to 1, that's i. i squared, that's negative 1. i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth, the value of that is 1. If you have i raised to 29, um, remember that it uh, after i to the fourth, it will become i to the fifth, which is i. So it repeats every four. That's why I have here i to the fourth. But to be close to 29, if I divide 29 by 4, it will give me 7 point something. That's why I raise this one to 7. And I raise to 4 to the 7 is i to the 28. But to reach i to the 29, I have to multiply by i. So with that, i to the 4th is 1. So this becomes i times 1 to the 7th, which is i times 1 or simply i. Letter A. Moving on, I hope you got this. Item number 42. A certain amount was invested at 5% simple interest. After nine years of investment, the money grew to a total of 72,500. How much in Philippine pesos was invested? Is it 40,000, 45,000, 48,500, or 50,000? We have to remember that the formula for the final amount is equal to the interest, which is PRT plus P. You could see in the right-hand side that you could factor out the P. So you have P times the quantity RT plus 1. And if you would like to determine that principal amount or the amount you invested, you have to divide both sides by RT plus 1. Hence, the principal amount or the amount you invested at first is equal to the total or final amount at the end divided by RT plus 1. By substitution now, uh, your final amount was 72,500. The rate that was invested, it's at 5% which when converted to decimals is 0 0.05 times the time, which is nine years, plus one. And you have your calculators with you. This simplifies to 50,000 pesos. Hence, the amount of investment was 50,000 pesos. D is the correct answer. 43. What is the equation of a circle whose radius is equal to four centered at the origin. Which of these four do you think is correct? For our answers here, we have to remember that the equation, the standard form of a circle or the equation in center radius form is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared where h and k are the coordinates of the center and r is your radius. So since our center is at the origin, so h and k are both zero, and your r is four in this case. By substitution, that's x minus zero quantity squared plus y minus zero quantity squared equals four squared, which is now simplified as x squared plus y squared equals 16. Letter A. I hope you got this correctly. 44. The graph of 2x minus 3y equals negative 6 does not pass through which quadrant? 1, 2, 3, or 4. To do this one, it's important that you have to graph the equation you could, there are many ways of graphing this. You could utilize the slope and the y-intercept. You could use specify the two points in this graph. You could also um, determine the x and y-intercepts. So, and connect them, these two points using a line. 
And in our case, doing such gives us the graph that was generated by GeoGebra. And you could see clearly this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three. And clearly, no portion of this line passes through quadrant four, hence letter D. Moving on to 45. For what value of A are the two lines 3x plus 4y equals 10 and ax plus 5y equals 3 parallel? So for here, remember that two lines are parallel if they have the same slope, but different y intercepts. So from here, remember that the slope of the line in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, equals zero, or in this case, even in standard form, equals c, is negative a over b. You could verify that. So the slope of 3x plus 4y equals 10 is negative 3 over 4 or negative 3 fourths. The slope of ax plus 5y equals 3 is negative of a over 5. And since these two have to be parallel, so they have to be equal with one another. So equating negative 3 fourths with negative a fifths and multiplying both sides by negative 5, you will arrive to 15 fourths as the value of A. The correct answer here is 15 fourths D. Okay. 46. Which of the following sets of ordered pairs are not that of a function? Is it A, B, C, or D? So remember, if you are given ordered pairs that are all distinct with one another in a particular set, the shortcut to tell if they are if they're forming a function or not is that x, if x is repeated, then it is not a function. But if no x did, if no abscissa or x was repeated, then it is that of a function. So from here, we could see that for letter A, the excess are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No repetition of excess, so A is a function. For B, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 still, so it's a function. For D, 0, 1, negative 1, 3, 5. So no X was repeated as well, so function. But for C, 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 1. So 1 here, the first and last have repetitions in x. So c is not a function. 40, I hope it's clear. 47. If r and s are the roots of x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0, what is 1 over r plus 1 over s? Is it negative 3, negative 1 third, 1 third or 3? All right. So Again, the usual technique employed by some here is that they really look for the exact values of the roots. But actually, it's not necessary using this technique. Using Vieta's formulas, if R and S are the roots of AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, where A is not equal to zero, then R plus S is equal to negative B over A. RS is C over A. You could verify that. So for x squared minus 3x minus 1, let's compute for the sum of the roots. So that is r plus s is equal to negative b over a, so negative of negative 3 over 1, which is 3. So the sum of your roots is 3. And for the product of the roots, that's c over a or negative 1 over 1 or negative 1. Now, how are we going to utilize this information? Remember that 1 over r plus 1 over s, when simplified uh, into a single fraction, their LCD is rs. So rs divided by r is s times 1. That's why you have s here. Plus rs divided by s is r 
times 1, you have your R here. So S plus R all over RS is the simplified value of this. But remember, by commutativity, S plus R is the same as R plus S, and you have here over RS. But based on what we found, RS is negative 1. Uh, sorry, R plus S is 3, and RS is negative 1. Hence, you have 3 over negative 1, which is negative 3. So letter A is the correct answer here. Moving on to item number 48. In a right triangle, cosine X equals 3 pence. What is cosine 2X? Is it 25 sevenths, 1, negative 7 25ths, or 16 25ths? From here, if cosine is 3 fifths, it follows, remember that cosine is ka, or adjacent over hypotenuse. That's why if I let this to be my acute angle, the adjacent is 3, the opposite, I mean the hypotenuse is 5. So we don't know the value of the, or the length of the opposite yet. So we may solve this using the Pythagorean theorem. Let y be the third side. By the Pythagorean theorem, you have 3 squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. You have 9 plus y squared equals 25. Minus 9 both sides gives y squared equals 16. Taking only the positive square root to get the value of y, you have 4. So therefore, the height now is 4. You have there. But remember, we are looking, uh, it follows also that the value of sine x, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 4, hypotenuse is 5. So sine x is 4 pips. Why do we need that? Because we're looking for the value of cosine 2x, which is in fact cosine squared x minus sine squared x. In fact, there are also other formulas for cosine 2x. Um, other books uh, use uh, only in terms of sines, other books only in terms of cosines. But for now, we will use this formula. But substitution wise, we have cosine 2x equals the square of 3 fifths, because that's your cosine x earlier, minus the square of sine x, which is, okay, this one. This simplifies to 9 25 minus 16 25 and that cosine 2x is negative 7 over 25, and that's letter C. I hope it's clear. 49. Which of the following is the simplified form of sine x over cosecant x? plus cosine x over secant x? Is it sine x, cosine x, tangent x, or cotangent x? We'll see. So remember, cosine, sine and cosine, and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Cosine and secant are also reciprocals of each other. Therefore, if I copy the sine x here, the cosecant x in the denominator when going to the numerator will become sine x. Plus I copy the cosine x and since they are reciprocals of each other, so secant x when it goes to the numerator, it will just become cosine x. So you have sine x times sine x plus cosine x times cosine x, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x. But remember, this is a trigonometric identity. And the value of this is equal to 1. And 1 is a simplified form, but it's not one of the choices. So E is the correct answer here. I hope you got E as well. Number 50. Who is regarded as the father of trigonometry? Is it Aristotle, Archimedes, Hipparchus, or Thales? And the correct answer is Hipparchus. Letter C. So Aristotle is very good in his logic as well. A logician, a philosopher, Archimedes, 
also invented many other stuff. Um, one of the most brilliant or one of the most prolific um, mathematicians in the ancient world, Thales, um, he postulated that uh, the diameter is the longest chord. I mean, he noted that the diameter is the longest chord and that the diameter divides a circle into two parts known as semicircles. So I hope you learned something out of the discussion today. With that, DYBM, thank you very much and a great day to one and all.